look at all these pretty vintage pin cushions. I am absolutely in love with these. So your free pattern for coming today is this lovely rose vintage one. Look at this one. I made a blue one for you as well to see the difference uh, when I'm using different fabrics. So for this one I did use 100% cotton and it's very very pretty and this is one of the things um, of, of these pin cushions that there's absolutely no rules. You could use your old prom dress to make a pin cushion, you could use denim, you could use t-shirt, you could use velvet, you can use any kind of fabric um, to make a pin cushion. I will talk more about different kinds of fabrics and why some are more suitable than others but you can basically be feel free and make it into any. You can make like the top one a solid color and the other one, the bottom one you could uh, make a patterned one whatever you want to do. So this is your free pattern for coming today and I know I'm going to see lovely pin cushion posted really really soon. Then we've got a small set of five different pin cushions also available. Look at this beautiful butterfly one. I love this one. Um, I can see young um, girls just starting to sew that grandma can make them one of these. There's like a triple little flower. So, so pretty. And of course, who don't love lavenders? Beautiful lavender pin cushion and it looks really well in this specific shape. The daisy one is pretty as well and then one that everyone needs is the sewing one. You can see that some of them, look at the difference between these two, that the segments of this one <coughs> is exactly the same size and then this one was designed that with the scissories it's a little bit larger looking like an uneven pizza but it's still a lot of fun. So let's look at what are you going to need to make these pin cushions so you don't need a lot of stuff and like I said you can be creative you can cut up old stuff and you can make a ton of them on average they stitch out 20 minutes but like the butterfly do take a little bit longer <clears throat> so I've got my 5x7 hoop you don't even need a large hoop to make this and I've already hooped my hoop with a medium weight cutaway stabilizer then the second thing that you are going to need and I'll explain it to you once we get started is a piece of quilters batting so you're going to need some quilters batting and there's a good reason for using the quilters batting we'll get to that and then you're going to decide what kind of fabric you want to use um, this could be cotton it could be um, lame fabric evening fabric it could be any kind of fabric or just ordinary cotton or even muslin whatever you want but you are going to have two uh, pieces for making your pin cushion. Now if you decide that you want one plain and the other one printed or you want different fabrics it's absolutely up to you but you will need two pieces of your fabric large enough to cover your circle and for this specific um, velvet fabric I am going to use a piece of plastic topper. If you are going to stitch out a cotton um, pin cushion you do not need the topper this is only when you need um, your um, stitches to stay on top of the fabric and don't sink into the fabric and then they don't look so good so that's why I'm using the piece of topper what else will you need to make <coughs> your pin cushion oh you are going to need some bedding some stuffing Wow, those old pillows will come in handy to make some pin cushions. So right, we are going to need that. I will also talk about different things that you can use inside of your pin cushion to sharpen your needles or your pins at the same time. So we'll talk to the, uh, about that later on. About fabrics, I'm just going to show you a few different fabrics. So this is like the golden lame type of fabric and you will see that I really like using different types of fabrics or to really try it out because sometimes you might be amazed stepping out of your comfort zone with fabrics um, how amazing it can look so this is a nice golden lame type of fabric this is like a green um, um, fabric that is the same as this velvet it's like a velvet um, it's like 
a little bit hairy and that's the one that you're going to use the topping so this is the green velvet and we're going to work on the pink velvet and you could even use like fabric I've picked this one because it's like a cheese cloth um, so you can use like printed cheese cloth or you can even use cheese cloth if you like and then this is a thicker type of fabric soon you will see a lot of um, the new techniques are going to be on this specific fabric this is simply amazing I call it my base silver fabric it's a really thick fabric it almost looks like it's got snake scabs on it um, but this is the one that I made this pin cushion out of so be creative with your fabrics use whatever you want and don't be afraid to try this is so cheap um, that you are going to make a lot of them in no time you will also see that inside of the centers you can use many things like over here I used like a wooden um, button and it's a butterfly these ones are just pretty buttons you can use some pearls so be creative with this maybe you saw this steel wool and wonder about it I'm going to show you later on how you can put steel wool inside of your pin cushion to help sharpen your pins and your needles so let's go on starting to make our design oh and then the last thing that you will need is um, you're going to need a thicker strong type of either string or you could use this is a crochet yarn don't use wool because the wool is not strong enough so whatever thick strong type of thread or um, yarn you can get this is what you will use them you would like the same color to match with your fabric to make it look good but later on once we do that we'll talk more about that let's get started I'm getting my pin cushions out of the way and we are ready to start I'm working on the wonderful baby lock Solaris and I'm going to <coughs> um, tell you more about the bobbin thread the bobbin thread you don't have to worry about it because you're not going to see at the back um, of your pin cushion so you can use whatever um, um, bobbin thread you're using you could match it if you like but I'm using a 60 weight ordinary bobbin thread I'm using sulky rayon threads you can use whatever thread you want to use but these days I have to tell you that I started to enjoy some of the variegated threads you can see inside of this design that I did use some variegated thread and it really gives it a lot of dimension so sometimes in a, um, in a way I like to use the variegated thread because it just gives you some dimension and for the pin cushions I really suggest that you try out some of your variegated thread because it becomes a lot of fun inside of the pin cushion so I'm, I'm using four different threads my needle is a 80 slash 12 and we are going to get started so to get started I'm going to go to my screen of the baby lock Solaris and I'm going to go into my embroidery screen I will select my little pocket and I'm going to select my USB to my free pin cushion which is the rose the vintage rose free pin cushion and I'm going to select my PES format and I'm going to click on set now I've already um, selected the 5x7 hoop but you want to make sure by clicking on the information on page 8 uh, the frame size is the 5x7 and we are ready to get started I'm going to set it to the embroidery screen and now we are going to get started so one of the things that I just want to tell you is once you start running your guidelines and you will see at the end when we are going to put our lining on top you kind of want to use the same color like if you've got like a yellow pin cushion then do use the yellow to do your first steps and your last steps because that's really going to give you a neat finish else if you would like use red or blue that would not look as neat so I'm going to select a pink color of thread and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, piece of my medium weight cutaway stabilizer it's already inside of the hoop and I'm going to take my piece of quilters batting and I'm just going to let it lie flat and my machine is going to run like a round circle to show us the placement of our fabric
you can see that our circle is stitched out on top of our quilter's padding and you can always help with your hands just to make sure that the circle is nicely placed and our first thing that we are going to do is take our piece of whatever fabric you are using right you're going to take the right side facing up and you're going to lay it on top of your quilter's padding now before we start stitching there's two things that I want to say. The first is, you might wonder, what is the reason why I'm using uh, the quilter's batting so that it's going to be underneath? So the first thing why I like to use the quilter's batting is because the quilter's batting really makes your design look embossed. Right? It really pops out. You will see just now, once it starts stitching, that it embosses your design. Secondly, working with different types of fabric, if you would um, have this fabric just on top of the medium weight stabilizer and now you're going to stitch it out, there might be some kind of puckering and you don't want that within your um, pin cushion. So this batting makes it embossed. It helps to reduce the puckering to really make your design pop. Secondly, the other thing why I love to use it is because once you start to fill your pin cushion um, once you are done, because there's like a layer of the quilter's batting on top it's going to look nice and even where if you're just going to um, put in your filling it could look like your pin cushion has got some cellulite right so I love this quilter's batting because it evens out and have it look good with an even look so when you are doing like cotton fabrics you can just lie it on top of your um, quilters batting but whenever you are using like these type of fabrics that like to shift within the hoop I strongly suggest that you use some temporary adhesive spray like Silky's KK2000 and we've got a specific webinar on this showing you how to create a hoop mask right so I'm just gonna go ahead and off camera in my hoop mask I'm just spraying my circle I just sprayed it and you can see over there it's a little bit tacky and this is just going with velvet you want to do that as well because velvet likes to move cotton not so much so you can see I already going to just spread out my velvet so it lies on top of my quilters batting and this is only for when you are going to um, use a fabric that likes to move alright so the second step I'm still using the same pink color because um, we want it to look nice and neat and I'm going to still help it with my hand you will see that there's like a extra little piece at the top that is going to stitch you might want to help it a little bit over there to make it even so let's go by stitching our fabric onto our quilters batting Our fabric is neatly secured on top of our quilters padding and our stabilizer and our first color is going to be the green leaves so before we can get started with that I've changed my thread to the green and you want to take your plastic um, it's like a film right this is a water soluble topping um, if you don't know yet how it works it's the one side has got like a grid side the other one is smooth so you want to take it with the grid side lying down and I'm just going to cover my piece of fabric and this is really going to help us so that our stitches don't go within the velvet looking great remember you only need that when you're using specific fabric like velvet for instance or if you're going to make like one using toweling but for um, ordinary cottons and evening fabrics you do not need a topping so I'm gonna go um, color by color finishing up our embroidery part and then I'm going to show you how to do the lining so let's go
we are done stitching the details on top of our pin cushion and you can see that this water solvy really did a great job because the roses is right on top of the plastic it did not sink into the fibers of the velvet and now we can pull off the plastic so before we want to line our pin cushion we need to pull off the plastic but I first want you to see can you see there's like a little dot right in the middle this is a stitch that the machine is going to stitch to show you exactly where the middle of your design is so once we are going to prepare our pin cushion to make it like into this pumpkin like segment shape we will know exactly where the middle is so that is our middle so let's pull off our plastic and this pulls off really really easy right and I've got pink thread on there and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back into the machine so I'm taking my second piece of the pink velvet that I'm using and whatever fabric you are going to use you're going to take it and you're going to turn it around so that the right side is facing down the wrong side is facing up so I'm just covering my fabric within the hoop on top of each other right sides facing each other and I'm just making sure there's no creases and I'm kind of like you can already see that it shapes like into the design over there and with the same pink color that I use at the start so that it can have a nice and neat finish I'm just going to run the machine and it's going to stitch my lining on top of my base fabric you can see that it neatly secured my lining on top of my pin cushion and there's a nice wide opening over here where we are going to turn the pin cushion inside out and you are basically done with the embroidery part and next all you have to do is cut and um, I'm going to show exactly how to finish up making the beautiful pin cushion so any of the pin cushions it doesn't matter what design you are using you will do it exactly the same way it's just the details and the colors that's going to uh, be different so you will always start using your medium weight cutaway stabilizer you will put your quilters batting on top the machine is going to run the circle and you are going to take your first fabric right side facing up and you are going to run the circle do the detail and last you are going to take your piece of lining right side down run it and then you are ready to go on to the next step and remember whenever you are using velvet or any fabric that the um, design can sink into the fibers use your plastic topping it really helps for the design to pop so let's get, uh, go over to our craft table and finish up our pin cushion So, let's finish up our pin cushion. I bet one of the questions that you might have and wondering about is did I uh, use pre-washed fabric? Well, I almost always use pre-washed fabric, but specifically for making a pin cushion, you don't have to worry about that because you're not going to wash this pin cushions. If it gets that dirty, you're simply going to throw it away and make a new one. So don't worry about pre-washed fabrics unless you really want to add this to your washing day all right so I'm going to unhoop my um, design and I'm going to turn it around from the stabilizer side and all I'm going to do is just start cutting right next to my stitch line just underneath my I'm cutting underneath the cutaway stabilizer. Now 
next I'm going to cut my quilters batting and you might want to pull it up and pull your fabric down so that you don't cut into your fabric so lift your fingers or lift your quilters batting put your fingers over there and then you lift it like cutting like that and it's just going to make it easier for you to trim the quilters batting holding it making sure that your fabric is flat with your fingers Now that your batting is cut, we need to trim around the circle and I always work from the stabilizer side so that you can see that little extra part on top of the, sil um, of the stitch line, right? So I'm just going to start cutting anywhere, just quarter of an inch around my circle, just cutting through both layers of the fabric and when you get to here you can trim nicely around that because that's an extra part um, on the design it's not like if you cut too close to it that it can unravel this is where you're going to fold it in to um, close it up with some hand stitching or some top stitching so I'm just going to go around the circle quarter of an inch finishing up And now I'm going to gently turn my design inside out. The opening is nice and wide so it's really not difficult to turn it around. Right and with my finger I'm just going to go around the circle and it's so easy to do that. Right? You can see it almost looks like a little purse. Right? You can see it's nicely lined, it looks like a little purse and I've got my dot in the middle going to show me where is the center. And now it's time to fill up um, with our stuffing or our batting or whatever you prefer. Now, a lot of people tell me that they take walnut shells and they fill up. So if you want to fill up your pincushion with some walnut shells, this is the part where you're going to simply fill it with the walnut shells. You will um, sew it up and then we are going to do our um, part where we make it look into segments. Then there is another trick you can do using some steel wool and this will also help to make your pins um, sharp but personally I just do it with the batting, stuff it up but a lot of people report that using steel wool keep it nice and sharp and so does the uh, walnut. So you can decide what you want to do. I'm just going to show you how to stuff it, finish it up but it's optional how you want to fill it. So I'm going to take some of my stuffing and I'm just starting right at the bottom, filling it up and it will also depend how stiff you want it and how, um, you know, do you want like a really puffy type of pincushion or do you want a more flatter one? It's up to you. You can see that this too is basically the same size but this one is really stiff uh, with all of the batting that I've used so if you really add a lot of batting it become a little bit bigger alright but that's optional I'm just gonna make sure it's stuffed enough so that we can get the effect with our segments now can you see if you turn it around at the bottom then you can see actually um, the texture of the padding while on top you can't see it and that is the main reason why I did use my quilters padding because it gives you that really smooth even finish because uh, the top layer holds the stuffing at the bottom and it's not making like lumps and bumps which is great so 
you could use it without the quilters batting but if you want it perfect just take that extra part and add the quilters batting to really have a perfect little pin cushion so I think that's about it I'm just going to close up over here making sure that we've got enough right a little bit more and now all you do is you take this extra part basically and you're going to fold it over so that you can see where the fold is and then you're going to take the back lining fabric you're just gonna fold it right and you're going to line it up and what you want to do is you want to try and keep the curve right so I'm gonna take my little quilters clip it might take a little bit in the beginning if it's your first time but what you want to try and do is keep the curve and it's easier to use the little quilters clips because they are like extra little hands and I'm first going to just make sure that it lines up and that gives you the opportunity to move it before you stitch it together and you can stitch it with your machine by using top stitching or you can sew it together by hand which I'm going to do now and you can see this is pretty neat because it's in the curve right and then at the end you just want to make sure that there's no extra fabric else you want to have kind of like spread that's a quite neat one that I did so I'm just going to add two little quilters clips right and I've already taken my needle and I added some pink thread and now I'm going to start stitching it on top of each other and when you're done you can like uh, move it around until it's even so I'm going to meet you once it's um, stitched up and we will complete it I'm done with uh, my stitching over here and um, that's pretty neat I did like a little blanket stitch I like to do the blanket stitch because it just looks more natural going into uh, the other stitches and um, at this stage it looks like a fat little pancake right so let's go and shape it to make it look like the segmented little pumpkin so I'm taking some of the crochet yarn and this is strong enough to do what I need to do so you can use even very thick uh, like a 12 weight thread if you want to do that and double it up uh, whatever you want to use just make sure that it's not like wool that's something that's going to snap because then your pumpkin will not be held in place so I took like 2.2 yards of my um, crochet yarn and I'm using a sharp point needle um, that the eye is big enough to insert my thread right if you've got a longer sharp needle where the eye is big enough for this use the longer one that's even easier if you don't have that I'm going to show you how you can use some pliers to make it easy so the first thing that you want to do is take a long pin and put it right through the middle sticking it right to the back and then you are going to turn your pin cushion around and with the pin over here you can now see where the center is and what I do now is I take my needle and I'm just going to go in right next to my pin right and then if I'm sure that the, the um, needle is inside right in the middle like you can see I'm just holding it over there I'm going to pull up my pin so I don't hurt myself and I'm going to push my needle but now the needle needs to come out exactly on that center can you see that that little center so my needle needs so I'm pushing my pin cushion down like that and I'm going to pull it through if this part is hard for you you can simply take some pliers and you can take the needle and you can pull it through but that's not really hard at all so now I'm pulling it through and this is a double layer which I took 2.2 um, yards of the yarn and I did fold it double and I made a little knot and now I'm pulling the knot through like that so it's coming from the back right in the middle so now the first thing that you want to do 
there's going to be eight segments right it's like cutting a pizza exactly so the first thing you want to do is you want to go right in between these two roses or whatever it is let's say it is this flowers you will see the images and that's going to guide you where you should um, take your yarn to so you will each time go right in the middle in between whatever little image it is so I'm gonna go right in the middle right you're still gonna have a second chance to make sure that it's correct but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thread and you are going to put it in between and you're gonna turn it around and what you want to do is right in the center put back your needle and you want to push through making sure that when it comes out it's going to be again right in the center it's important to stay right in the center because that's how it's going to look nice and neat now I'm pulling my thread up but before I'm going to pull it so that it's going to start forming it what you want to do is guide it with your hand so that it's not like more to the one side than to the other side you want to do it so that it's right in the middle and once you're happy you can turn it around and see okay that's good if you wanna you know take some wrinkles out and make sure that it's lying nice and you're happy with where it is you're now going to hold on to your thread and you're going to pull it so that the two pictures or the two little embroidery designs pull together and then holding it like that you're going to take your thread and go on to the next one in between the two images and I'm turning it around holding my thread right and once again go right at the back in the middle making sure I'm coming out at the exact same spot right in the middle at the front and then when you do that it still gives you the option you see you can still move this around making sure it's exactly where you want it before you're going to pull it and once you're happy with the position that it's not too far to the one side not too far to the other side and you say this is pretty good then you're going to pull it right and you can immediately see the two is pulling together and then you, all you do is you will keep on going in between each one of your little embroidery designs forming your segment going over coming from the back inserting your needle turn it around making sure that it's right in the middle and I'm going to pull it and remember once you put it through you still have time to guide it and then you will pull it so now you can see it's starting to shape like it at times it looks like little hearts uh, but whatever shape it's giving you is you're just gonna go and keep on going until you're at the end so I'm gonna meet you at the end where I've each time I'm going to go over put my needle from the back go through at the front and then once I'm happy it's right in the middle I'm gonna right really pull it so that it's shaping my little pumpkin I'm gonna meet you at the end once I'm done I've done my last one and my thread is right in the middle and I'm really liking each one of my little segments it's really nice and neat and what I'm going to do now is just take my thread and go right in the middle going back at the back and you just have to finish it off and um, to finish it off all you need to do is just like stitch it like at the back of the fabric so that it's into uh, the fabric and once you're done you're going to cut it and you can turn it around you can shape it a bit and now what you can do is you can take um, like your little um, like a button or a pearl or whatever you want to put in the middle you can use a glue gun like this one I did use a glue gun you're going to put it in and once you're done your pin cushion is done it's ready it was fast it was easy and it was uh, is absolutely beautiful and fun to do so who's gonna make a lot of pin cushion perfect little gifts fast and beautiful have fun ladies <laughs>